Good afternoon. We are inside China Business. The bull case, the investment case for putting new money to work into the U.S. and European farm agriculture sectors, it just doesn't exist anymore. If you have a farm, you should strongly, strongly consider selling. And I know this is a tough decision to make, especially if it's a legacy property, it's been in your family for generations, or if it's completely paid for, debt-free, then this is a different conversation. Besides that, it's very difficult. It's impossible to see how a new farmer buying land for the first time, especially borrowing money to buy that land, He's not going to make any money. Global food supplies are soaring and we have all time record harvests and the human population of the world will begin to decline in the end of the next decade. The profitability of farms in North America and Europe are falling and they are falling fast, particularly relative to farms in Russia and elsewhere here in Asia and even in Africa. These countries are taking our export markets away. We are also seeing booming farm productivity here in China and in India and also in Africa, which is where most of the world's populations are. This has been a particularly very bad two weeks for our wheat farmers. We've shared many times on this channel how uh, the world is very well supplied with grains, with the key foodstuffs and the calorie sources. And we've also shared how China strongly prefers to do more and more of their business outside the US dollar. And now we're seeing real damage to our wheat markets now lately. Wheat is down 14% in just three months and speculators there are still very bearish. They're still net short and they believe that the prices are gonna fall even further. Last week, China canceled two very large wheat buys. These were the biggest cancellations since 1999, going back 25 years. And yesterday, China notified regulators in France that they were going to be canceling orders there. We still don't know how much, but last year it made big news because China announced that they would be buying a lot of grain from France. And as a result of that, farmers in Europe got busy planting, expecting to supply China with wheat for the rest of this year. And now China's canceled the French orders. This morning, though, came the biggest news of all. Uh, 14 March, this time from Australia, China's canceling 1 million tons of wheat buys from Australia. And China's actually going to pay penalties to get out of these trades. The biggest story behind all this is probably Russia. They're the biggest actor here. And they're going to export 51 million tons of wheat this year. That's an increase of about 4 million over last year. And the Russians are also reporting that this crop might be one of the highest quality crops ever. Going back about 40 years, it's one of the best crops with respect to quality of harvest. Then we have Argentina, who is a new player. And last January, three months ago, China approved large scale imports from Argentina for the first time. We should say that we're not entirely sure that the 
orders that the Chinese have canceled from the U.S. and Europe and Australia will be replaced by Russia and Argentina. We just don't know. The trades will be done outside the dollar if that happens. And so, as usual, we're just not even going to see it. By the way, Argentina hopes to export 10 million tons of wheat to China this year. Last year, it was zero. Kazakhstan is another issue. Kazakhstan is a large country right next door. And they are exporting a lot of wheat into China now. 2023, they exported 24 times more wheat than they did the previous year. Not 24%, but 24 times. And they're hoping to get over a million tons into China this year. China does prefer to stockpile large reserves of wheat. Over half of all the world's reserves of wheat are here in China, and 70% and of the corn too. And authorities here like to manage huge grain reserves so that they can properly regulate prices throughout the year. That means that even if the China markets are well supplied, they are still very active in the global markets bringing new supplies in. And until two weeks ago, we believed that U.S. farmers would be sending 500,000 tons over and that the Australians would be putting in a million. So that is 1.5 million tons of wheat that we thought were coming here from U.S. farmers and Australians. To put that number into some perspective, uh, a Panamax, a Panamax the Panamax ship is the biggest ship that can go through the Panama Canal. And the cargo volumes on a Panamax ship is 68,000 tons, 68,000. 1.5 million tons means that 22 ships of wheat worth of orders got canceled last week. What all this means for farmers in North America and Europe is nothing good at all. When the Ukraine and Russia war first began, there was a huge spike in prices, a giant run up in prices. And then as soon as market traders and shippers figured out how to broker a deal that would get the ships out of the Black Sea, prices started falling and they were falling fast and they've been falling ever since. So even with the Ukraine-Russia war still ongoing, we're getting supplies out of there, no problem. We are seeing record crop yields from every corner of the planet. And when you add to that the fact that North American and European farmers are simply much less productive on a cost basis, because everything costs so much more, it's hard to see good news anywhere. China is demonstrating a very, very strong preference to do more and more of their energy and food business outside the U.S. dollar. If they have no choice, they will buy from Canada. They will buy from us. They will buy from Europe. They will buy from Australia. They strongly prefer not to. And with these record harvests everywhere, including here in China, they don't have to. Thank you. Be good.